So if you create a brand new page, you have a blank canvas, which is the best thing and the worst thing. Because it's the best, there's a lot you can do. The worst, how do I even start? So there's a lot to look at on a, on a screen like this, which looks familiar to a basic Facebook profile, but it's got a lot of differences. Now here's one of the things, uh, Facebook changes all the time, Twitter changes all the time, all the networks change all the time. So whatever you learn might only be relevant for like six months, 12 months, two years, who knows, it, it changes. So I remember a few years ago there was a very obvious and easy way to, to pay attention to what you were doing. You would be able to switch between your personal profile and your business page it would be obvious now it's not obvious anymore because if I press right here the button home that doesn't mean the home screen of my business that took me to the home screen of me Victor the person and talking my friends and family talking about earthquakes so that home button means go back home to you the person not the business Obviously, if I click my name here also, it would go to my personal profile, so that's not where I want to go. You have to make sure that you've switched over, clicking on, you might see all pages here maybe, but also at the triangle you will see it here, and I see right there, Victor's Bakery. When I click there, the only real indicator that I'm in the Facebook page, that I'm managing the Facebook page, that, that I'm editing the Facebook page, is that it says the name of my business at the top left in this little box up there. I still see my picture there, I still see home, I still see my friends. It doesn't even look like I'm really editing my business. It looks like it's I'm there as Victor. But no, you. this is what I was saying. They changed this and I don't like it anymore. Um, unfortunately, I have to say as we use Facebook more and more, there's gonna be a lot of things I don't like. And under full disclosure, I hate Facebook. I will teach you all that I know about Facebook, and I will teach you all that I know about it for business purposes, but for personal, I hate Facebook. I don't like logging in, I don't like the people behind it, I don't like its philosophy, I don't like Facebook. But for business, I love it, because Facebook can tell me about the customers and their location and what they're interested in, and I can market exactly to who I want. That I love. But all of this intrusion about the pop-ups and, and doing this and that and giving this info and all of that, I don't like it personally. I've got all of these notifications here. For some people, oh, it's, it's killing you. Read your notifications. No, I don't care. For business, though, I do um, do the best that I can. Obviously, I have to. If my company gets hired to run social media uh, for a business, I have to put that aside and do the best job I can for the business. But I'm going to be griping so many times, such as it's so easy to get lost and forget what you are editing. And it has happened that I thought I was editing the business page and whoops I did it to personal or opposite I thought I was on my personal account and I put something from a business because as you can see up here I manage more than one business these are a bunch of different clients the good thing is at least that whatever I write in one account will not automatically go to another account I have to do it uh, I have to do it obviously but uh, one person, as I said, one person can manage multiple, one profile can manage multiple pages. So you see that I've done that there. The first thing that we will do then with any business pages, we have to remember that we're to switch to edit it properly. So. When if you go home to do to continue to do this at home, you log in, it will take you automatically to personal. So to edit your business page, log in as the personal profile. Click on the little black triangle at top right select your business name and make sure that you see the name of your business uh, in the search box at top left
over that search box in more ways. But um, in the top left corner, that's a box to search. And again, it doesn't sound intuitive, but you need to make sure that the name of your business is in the top left corner in the search box, like I have it right here. I'm in Victor's Bakery. I'm editing Victor's Bakery. Even though the other indicators on the screen look like it says you're still in Victor's personal page. If you know that you've clicked on your name under the tri the name of your business under the triangle, you should be in the right place. We have a lot of settings to look at that I would recommend. And I had jumping back up here. As soon as possible, set up the basic styling of your page. As soon as possible, claim your username. Remember that I said that by default, we've all got a name with gibberish. I want to claim. I want to shorten. I want to get the nice looking name. If you notice on my page, I am facebook.com slash Victor's Bakery San Diego 76940512, etc. I want to shorten that. I want to simply have something like facebook.com Victor's Bakery. I want that short name. As soon as possible, you want to claim the short name, and the way to claim it is right here. Right underneath your profile picture, create a page username. Uh, I'm not going to do it right now. I'm just going to click it to show you what it looks like, but I don't recommend to do this right now if, you're do if you've got a fake page like me. I created a quick, temporary, fake page to teach you this, and I recommended everyone to create a t quick, temporary page just to learn this, so I wouldn't want you to claim that name unless you are you are going to keep this page when the class is over. If you're not going to keep this when the class is over, don't claim the name and don't steal it from yourself when you want to do it for real. So this is my note right here. As soon as possible, claim your username. I'll also write it down here. As soon as possible, claim your username. So after logging in, And switching to your business account, business page, below your profile picture, click create page at username. I said earlier that you can change anything on Facebook. The username is a special case. You can change it, but they have some limits. I think that's like you can only change your you can only change your username once every six months. Something like that. It's a it's a long time. Because they they don't want spammers to steal these names or to claim these different names just to um, try to get more traffic. So set your unique username. Be aware it cannot be changed as often easily as anything else on your page for security purposes security and anti-spam purposes So notice what this looks like. I clicked on the button Create Page Username, and it says it's easier for people to find your page in search when it has a unique name. 
Pages with usernames can also create a custom URL, that address, that let people quickly visit and message them. So Victor's Bakery, I have here up to 50 characters. So if I'm trying to write something like Victor's Bakery, um, it says either it's unavailable or there are characters that aren't allowed. And basically, you cannot have um, you know, like an apostrophe, spaces. This has already been taken, so can do, can't do dashes and underscores and all of that. So Victor's Bakery, taken. Someone else took it. So I might have to do Victor's Bakery, San Diego. I get the check mark. It says, yeah, you can claim that one. Maybe that's too long. I could put Victor's Bakery SD. It says, yeah, you could do that one. Now, does that mean Victor's Bakery San Diego or Victor's Bakery South Dakota? So this is another reason why claiming your name is valuable, because then you have to settle for something else that might not be as intuitive or nice looking or, or whatever. As soon as possible, claim your username, or you might have to settle for a variation. We've got a client that they have a long name of their business, and it, and it doesn't fit. So we have to have a variation of it where it's a little shorter, there's abbreviations and such. There are limits on these things. I would also say try to have the same username across your social media. So the same username spelled the same on Facebook and on Twitter and on all the networks. Consistency. If a person wants to check out your account on Facebook and they know your name on Twitter, they will have an easier time finding you also on Facebook. So again, I will not claim that name here. Uh, you want to do that on your page that will be for legitimate business. And if you already had a Facebook page before this, that's, that's how you set that up. If you haven't done so yet, you can change the username. As soon as possible, Set up the basic about information of your page, such as um, name, biography, location, web address. We'll see what other ones are here. But all of this basic contact information want to set that up as soon as possible. If, if we're trying to build our followers on all of the networks and our page is incomplete, it has no graphics and all of that, we're not enticing people to follow us. We're not building our followers. We're not building our captive audience. We're not increasing our 1% ratio. One of the ways that we don't look legitimate or enticing to follow is that we don't have a complete profile. So for example here, uh, on the left side, under the username we've got home post reviews, see more about. There's a screen here with a bunch of boxes to fill in that I recommend that we fill in all of these boxes so that we can get found by people that are important for us to connect to. So let's tr give this one a try. If you don't see on the left side about, you have to probably click that See More button. 
So on the left column, see more about There's a lot of things in here to fill out. I, I don't have to explain every single one of them, but you see we've got... There's the spot where you change your category. So if you went to the wrong category, you can change that. Uh, I misspell the name of my business, the non-unique name. I can fix that. I want to claim or change my username. That's where I can do it as well. We've got um, this other business info. The details. When did the business start? Your mission, the phone number, the email, the website, even more about. Yes? Where it says email, inner website, is that a place to put, like inner website, would that be a place to put on your, your Twitter information? Or? You could. There, is, there is only one line, one slot, that is. So if you have other social networks, they will not all fit in there. It all, it's only a slot for one. What you probably would want to put there, however, is the link to your main website, victorsbakery.com. Right here I have facebook.com. I'm piggybacking on Facebook's network, facebook.com slash victorsbakery. I want my own, victorsbakery.com. So most likely you would enter it in that web address. So fill in as much as the info as possible because it helps you get found. Let me put it in this order. It makes you look legitimate. Legitimate. I don't have spell check on this legitimate. Sure. It helps you get found. Um, I had one more thing that it slipped my mind. But at those two very least, it makes you look legitimate that it's a um, real business. It's the real business that I need to. Uh, that I'm trying to follow, that I'm trying to find, or that I'm trying to purchase. Oh, and then the third one. Um, it helps drive results or create results. Right? The conversions. For example, your website. Add a link back to your main website so that you can further complete your ultimate conversion, your ultimate goal. My ultimate conversion of Victor's Bakery is to sell cookies, to sell cupcakes. I have a product. I'm trying to sell that. All this social media stuff is great. But ultimately, you know, those likes and those comments and follows, that's all great. But ultimately, my ultimate conversion is sales, to sell those cupcakes. Well, if I take people back to my website, that's where I can have my coupons or my shopping cart or whatever feature that I don't have on Facebook or Twitter or whatever. I could put there a link over to my eBay shop or my Etsy store or my Amazon affiliate store or whatever. Because in those terms of service, in there, there are there are some limitations about how you can use the page for actual selling and all of that. They've very recently started to add a system where you can sell on Facebook. And throughout these years that I've taught this, I always had to say, you cannot sell your product on Facebook, so take them back to your website. Very recently, now I have to change my, my class, my lectures, you can now start selling stuff on Facebook. That's one of the things that I have to further educate myself on. I don't think they take a commission. Um, I have to educate myself on it. I don't want to say too much about it. I don't quite know. But now you can start to sell on, on, on your Facebook. But still, you have to follow their rules of being on Facebook. And maybe you're trying to sell products that maybe are controversial, and then they won't like it on Facebook, so they shut you down. So you have the, the full control of what you're trying to do with your product or your presence, your services on your website if you have that link back to your website. 
So filling all that information, one of the things that results is that you uh, can drive traffic back to your site, back to your main website. For a lot of us, some of these things won't matter. Award, menu, there's one called Impressum. Notice um, with Impressum, or for many of these, if you click, it'll tell you what it is. Impressum only applies really to people in Austria, Germany, and Switzerland. So don't even worry about that. That's sort of like a truth in advertising sort of thing. Founding dates of the business, etc. The more you fill out of this, the better especially f for example things like the mission statement or the business details or this about info so let's take a digression about here on this topic we'll say uh, always create about content um, with the goal of being found in the other class that I teach, the SEO class, Search Engine Optimization, in that class, which is on Fridays, it's tomorrow. If you, if you missed it last week, you can come back for it day two tomorrow, 9.30 AM in this room. In that class, SEO, Search Engine Optimization, we're trying to optimize our website to be found by the search engines, Google and being and Yahoo and such so in that class I talk about the the art and the science and the magic of getting found by the search engines it's it's your content well there is somewhat of SEO search engine optimization that we have to do on Facebook as well because Facebook has its own search engine this box up here on the top left corner watch this if I go back home and that box disappears that right there is a search engine inside that searches only inside of Facebook. Google or Bing or any of these search engines right here, Google is going to search for something all over the internet. Um, Facebook and the other networks have a search engine only in their network. So if someone is searching if I'm interested in searching over here for, here's what I did previously, bakery near me. If I'm searching for bakery near me, it's going to say, here's bakeries that are near you. Pot pie, cupcakes, a la Iola, etc. So people are using all of the social networks, not just Facebook. They're searching inside of their, they're, they're searching inside of the network to find what they want. And one of the many ways that we will see that people get found is by the information they fill in in this about screen. Always create about content with the goal of being found. Use complete sentences and have keywords. These examples will make sense right here. In the about information, let's say what I write about my bakery. San Diego Bakery. This is bad because it's short. It's too simple. Better. San Diego Bakery. You can say affordable San Diego Bakery. It's another keyword. People might be searching with that keyword. I want to find a, a bakery that's affordable. And I'm in San Diego. So I've got those keywords best affordable San Diego bakery specializing in organic treats all of them are complete sentences the last one it's longer because it has to be because it's detailed it's got the keyword affordable if I spell it right affordable it's got that keyword people could be searching for the keyword affordable bakery it's got the keyword San Diego someone's looking for a business in San Diego 
California. The business is a bakery. Um, specializing is not that big, but it connects the word. It connects the words as a real sentence, and I have the keyword organic. So someone may be searching for organic bakery in San Diego. I hit the word organic. I hit the word bakery. I hit the word San Diego. So, in a very simple simplification, this is SEO, search engine optimization. Search engine optimization. Finding the keywords to use your site to get found to help you get found there's a lot of details and nuances and pitfalls and do's and don'ts and all of that so it's not as simple as that but just to just to give you the short answer that's um, SEO and we need to engage in an aspect of that also in Facebook So you've got these spaces here to write that stuff. I would not say that these are optional. I would say to fill them in as much as possible. Any questions on this about screen before we move on? Okay, so yes. Sorry, I was fidgeting in my chair. Can you say that again? Technically, no. If a person is trying to sell a username, they're violating Facebook's terms. Facebook doesn't want people to sell usernames. If you're trying to do it yourself, I would not recommend to do it. I would not try to buy it from someone because it could cause you to be shut out of Facebook. Transferring from yourself to another profile could be something that you could do. Because notice, I, as I said, I have various kinds of businesses. So I could sort of transfer this name to that business. but. I would have to first remove the current username of that business to something else, um, and then move that username to something else to free it up, and then I could transfer it to the other one. OK, let's look at a screen that is very important, that is kind of complex, but um, a lot of People don't use this screen because it, it is complex. We'll see why it's so useful. In, in your main business page here, you should see you've got settings. There are a lot of settings to properly optimize your page to set it up for, the, for best results. So let's go here. Let's go to the settings of your page. If you don't see settings, you're probably over on your personal account or something. Make sure that you're in your business page and then click settings under settings there's many 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 screens here I'll point out several important ones but not every single one let's look at one thing first here jumping down to uh, page roles everyone who works on your page can have a different role depending on what they need to work on this is where you set up managers. This is where you have different people controlling this page, meaning they log in with their own credentials. They answer a customer's question. They um, upload a new picture or video. They're managers. Right now, there's only one manager, me, the one that created it. So yes, technically, let's say for like a big company, McDonald's, someone logged in 
as a person, created the McDonald's page, and then added the other 5,000 people that work on the McDonald's page, or 500 or whatever. So this is what we would need to do to get other people to manage our business to help us. If you scroll down, assign a new page role, existing page role. So I created it. I'm an admin. I have the full control. If I want to assign other people, type a name or email. So just as an example, I'm going to assign someone else in the business. So here's one of my colleagues. I'm about to add a new person to help me manage this business. And they have a role, meaning an amount of power that they have. Editor can send messages and publish, etc., etc. If I change this to moderator, can send messages and do whatever. If I change it lower and lower, the lower I go, the less power they have. Analyst can see which admin created a post or commented and view insights or data. So this hierarchy here from top to bottom is the most power to the least power. Most likely, most people you're going to have a connection with here will be an editor. They will be able to send messages to the customers, post pictures and video and whatever, delete people's negative comments, create ads, this is, a, this is the role that you want to give to most of your employees. Let's take it in terms of Victor's Bakery. I'm the boss, but I've got three people that help me manage it. I give those three people editor power. The reason I don't want the highest level, because it gives you also a warning, if you're adding a new admin, please keep in mind that they'll have the same permission as you, uh, as you do to make changes to this page. Technically, if I add another person as an admin, after the grace period, they can log in and remove me from my own business because they have full admin power. So disgruntled employee that just got fired that still has access to the page, they can go in and go to the setting right over here that says delete the page if you made them an admin. That's why the default is editor. And that's the one you probably want to give all of the people on your team. Let's say it's a family business. Still, are you going to give that full power even to a family family member in the family business? They don't need it. Editor probably is the best. Let's say here, important settings. Page rolls screen. Add or remove more people to help you manage the page and set roles. Recommendation, add new managers as an editor, adding as an admin might be too powerful. They can kick you out of your own page. It's an important screen that I show people early on because um, they need help managing their business. Page rolls. Pretty straightforward. Yes, the person does need to have a Facebook account to manage a Facebook page. If they don't have one, they will get emailed. They will, they will get, get an email sent to them, um, and then they have to create an account. Any questions on this screen then? Page rules. Okay, so 
um, there's another uh, set of important options over here. Let's go back to general. Under general, <clears throat> we have things such as our page is currently published, it's visible, everyone in the world could see it. You can edit any of these and change it to, for example, unpublished. Being unpublished means that those that are also managers can see it, but no one else in the world. There's a very important setting here, visitor posts just to edit it right here. Visitor posts. This ties into my theory about how to use social media for business. So in the notes here we'll say I probably didn't think of it but I'll claim it. Victor's theory of using social media for business. Monologue, dialogue. What does monologue mean? What does mono mean? One. Logos. I think it means speech. One speech. Monologue. One speech. One way speech. One way communication. Dialogue. What does die mean? Two. Logos. Speech. Dialogue. Two way. Communication. My theory is you can run social media for business as either a monologue or a dialogue, and both could work. But for most people, I think, especially us smaller businesses, I believe the dialogue will work better. So examples, monologue. A business publishes new, cool, interesting, useful content often. But never replies or engages with followers. We post, let's say we're running Victor's Bakery as a monologue in social media. We post these great photos of the food and coupons and videos and all that great stuff. And people are replying down at the bottom saying, oh, it looks so tasty. Or are you open today? Or when is your next sale? People are trying to interact with us. And we don't reply. We only talk at them. We post content at them and never reply. That can work often for the big companies. McDonald's, Nike, Chipotle, Keurig, whatever. For the big ones, they don't care to really answer the little people. They're, they're big enough that they're selling their product and they don't have to really answer their customers. That's not going to work for us. We're smaller companies. We're trying to get off the ground or keep the ball rolling. We better be answering our customers. An unhappy customer creates another unhappy customer, and then that hurts us as a small business. So my theory then further is using social media as a dialogue, which is simply that kind of the opposite of this then. The dialogue. Um, Business posts often, but is active with followers. A, I, I post a great photo. I post the same photo in both places of a great cupcake. And someone replies, looks so tasty. I'm not going to ignore that. That's a positive comment. That's, that's a potential customer that could be converted from simply a follower maybe to a buyer. So I take the moment, I, I take the opportunity 
to reply to that person that said, looks tasty. And I reply, yes, all of our cupcakes are made with the special ingredient, love. Mm -hmm. You know, I do something to keep it open and keep it active and keep the dialogue, the back and forth. Because people want to uh, see that you're a real company, that they matter, that their voice is heard. And those little subconscious things create, positive, create positivity and a community and the dialogue and could get the results of the conversions of sales. It is obviously more work because you needed to post the original photo and then monitor your replies to then reply with those, with those things. So acknowledge good interaction or attempt to fix bad interactions. I teach a bunch of different classes and sometimes they, they blend together. Apologies. Did we talk about it on Tuesday, Yelp, in this class? A little bit. You said that you should put it on your page. Um, because even if they're bad reviews, you leave us on it. Um, okay. If you have 45 reviews, it's worth having your client mm -hmm. try to it. Okay, good. So I did mention Facebook. This is very similar to that as well. People can comment on your page and be negative or positive. Obviously, the negative comments hurt, and we have to deal with them just like Facebook. But again, like I said last time, don't bribe them to fix their comments. Someone went off to your Facebook page and said the food was terrible, it was cold, the cupcake was flat, whatever. Uh, we're not going to go back and reply and, and be public and say, we're so sorry about that free cupcake next time. We're not going to give anything away. We're going to acknowledge the issue, uh, try to keep it positive, say that we understand their pain and such, and we'll try to fix it next time. But don't give anything away. So again, what I said about Yelp will apply here for Facebook. Uh, and what, what I said also about the good comments on Yelp will also apply here. Don't just let those slide by. And yeah, they're a great ego boost. But also, you should be replying to the good comments on Facebook to keep it positive, to keep it on track, and to hopefully get those conversions. Well, all of this goes into what this setting is that I've got behind this screen. That setting uh, can help you, can let you set up either the dialogue or the monologue. No, notice what we have here. Allow visitors to, to your page to publish posts or disable posts by other people on the page. There is the dialogue, there is the monologue. If I don't want people to comment on my page, if I only want to talk at them, I can turn off comments. I can have people just look at the fun pictures and great photos and coupons or whatever and click like or share but I'm not giving them a chance to comment, either positive or negative. And that's a monologue. And I don't recommend the monologue approach for us smaller businesses. I do recommend the dialogue approach to go back and forth. The problem, of course, and the scary part is, well, that means if I allow visitors to my page, anyone can be mean and nasty and off topic and, and, and negative and it's very easy for comments to degenerate and be flame wars and all of that. So then people think, I'll turn it off. I don't, I don't, I don't want to deal with the negativity. But you're also shutting down the positivity. Fortunately, there is a place in the middle. Review posts by other people before they are published to the page. Turning that one on will let anyone write anything, positive or negative, and nothing will appear until you approve it. So you could have the best comments coming through and the spam comments getting deleted and the negative comments getting deleted and the off-topic stuff getting deleted. And this is not anything about impinging on, on uh, free speech or anything like that. This is completely different. This is your page 
where you can manage it and you can guide it how you want. It's like in the real world, if someone is going to come to my house and they're on my front porch and they're yelling at me and, and berating me and obscenities, I can tell them, get off my property. Go to the sidewalk in public, but get off my property. I'm not infringing on their, on their free speech. They're on the sidewalk in public. Same thing here. They're on my property of my Facebook. I don't want the negativity. I will remove it. I will remove the negativity, the off topics, the spam. No problem. It's your own property. So I would recommend for most of us to keep to allow anyone to write anything, but have it be approved. And I'll show you where the approval screen is at. But nothing will appear until you approve it. That is a little more work because then now you're going to have to keep up to date with what people have been writing and read it and it might be negative and you might have to read a sentence of it and then you realize it's negative and then you delete it. But I think that's much better than the disable post because then that's a monologue and you're not, you're not putting the social in social media. You're keeping it one way. So that's one of the biggest changes that I would recommend to change here in your settings. Activate review posts. theory my recommendation keep your social media as a dialogue on Facebook in settings general Activate review posts by other people. This will keep your messages on topic and um, things civil you can guide the conversation Facebook does a very good job of um, letting you stay on message the opposite is Twitter uh, there's many instances on Twitter where a business's message has gotten away from them when we talk about keywords and hashtags it's very easy for a hashtag to be hijacked and to lose its meaning and then to be detrimental to you on Twitter. It's a very open system. On the opposite is Facebook, which can be a very closed system to our benefit in that we can keep the conversation and the content on track. We can uh, control the message a lot better by removing content and um, not allowing it if it's negative. And manage posts. Keep the good. Manage the posts that are being added to your page. see some other settings right here um, There's a spot here, um, right below the one we just looked at, news feed audience and visibility. 
the ability to narrow the potential audience for newsfeed on your post is turned off. The two options are to turn it on or off. Well, what this is, when it's on, when you create a post, you can choose which people see it in news by selecting your audience's interests. You also have the option to control who sees it by limiting the audience and location. This is what is what I said earlier on, on Tuesday about targeting. Right now, whatever I post on my page, everyone could see it, everyone could find it. It's not specific enough. Just like if I'm putting an ad for my business on the cooking channel, I'm trying to reach an audience of who cares about my business on a TV channel about people who care. I won't put my restaurant's commercial maybe on a financial channel. The people watching that financial channel are interested in finance. So if I've got a, um, a tax office, a tax preparation office, I might put my ad on a TV channel about finance. See, it makes sense. I'm putting the business to the right audience. The default is that idea is off in Facebook. It's going to go to everyone, which sort of is to no one because we're not targeting. I would recommend to turn this one on and save it. When we actually create posts, we will see. Let's send this post to the right people. Instead of to everyone, which is no one, we'll send it to the right people by turning that on. Or we can limit it. Don't let certain groups see this. Usually it's set up to let certain groups see it. So I would say for this section, turn this one on so you have that ability to target. Newsfeed audience visibility for posts, turn on. lets you send your or target your posts to the right people. The more you target the right people, the more you could get those conversions. I would turn that on. These other options that are here, you have to go into it to see what would be relevant to you. For example, there's an area about age restriction. Maybe you've got a product for certain age groups. You could change that. Moderation and profanity filters. So if you want to keep that, you know, blocking certain words and such, you can go there. So a lot of them are pretty self-explanatory. There's another one here. Post in multiple languages. Ability to write posts in multiple languages is turned off. By default right now, what you're writing is in one language. The basic here, English. But if you wanted to have the ability to write your posts in different languages, you could go here and turn that on. So let's see their explanation. Your post will be shown to your followers in a language that is most relevant to them comments and likes will be added to the same post. 
So um, I personally haven't done that very much, so I can't fully comment on it, but people have told me that it's been useful to them uh, to have different versions of your posts in different languages to reach the right audience. So um, the more you reach people the right way, the more conversions. The more impressions, the more conversions. So that might be something useful to turn on. At the bottom here, we've got download page. So you can download everything that your page is, all of the pictures you've uploaded, all the text and everything. You can download it as a copy for yourself if you want it. You can merge pages. This happens a few times that uh, someone creates the, the business page, but then you created another one after you learn this and now you've got two of the same business page so they should be merged so all the likes and stuff from the other page will come back to this one master page and that's a process that you can do of merging and lastly we've got remove page so if you uh, go through this class and you created a, a temporary fake account like me or a fake page you can delete it and uh, it'll go away. You do have a 14-day grace period in case you don't want to really delete it. You can go back and cancel the deletion within 14 days and you'll keep it. But probably for most of us we're going to delete it um, if it's just a temporary kind of like staging ground. We'll take another break and then we'll look at a couple more settings. And then we'll go on. So uh, it's 8.20, we'll take a break until 8.30, and we'll go on.